four-time All-Star and last season's AL strikeout leader is at it again. Boy, that is. Well, you got no chance. That is. <laughs> got him strike three. Chris Sale's a perfect 8-0 to start 2016, and a win tonight puts him in further elite company. But more importantly, it would help his Sox avoid a three-game sweep at the hands of the Astros. The warm-up continues in Chicago. It's game three of a three-game series between the leaders of the AL Central, the White Sox, and the Houston Astros out of the West. We welcome you to U.S. Cellular Field. Jason Benetti, Steve Stone along with you. When you talk about a stopper in a rotation, Chris Sale's name is next to that word. And Chris Sale has been just brilliant this year. In fact, he can surprise you. He can finesse you and he can out and out blow you away depending on how he feels there's a fastball there's his slider he's got a great straight change he can move it up down in out he'll even hit you and strike you out Chris Sale has been all everything and as you can see his numbers this year spectacular so the most consecutive wins at the start of each season you see Ed Seacott with 12 John Whitehead John Garland Chris Sale all tied with eight he's going for nine in a row here tonight. And to do that, he's got to beat a red hot ball club because Houston is hitting the baseball pretty well. They've won the first two. You used to hit people and strike them out at the same time, too, didn't you? Not often. Back to the Astros. Jose Altuve has been just a pain in the backside this series, hasn't he? Well, he's, look, he's a little guy, but he's got big, big talent. And this guy is second in the league in hitting, first in the league in runs scored, and in this series, he's been brilliant. 15 stolen bases, only been cut down one time, four for eight in this series, three driven in, he scored a run, and generally, he has been a gigantic pain in a very little body. So there's the leader of the ball club. He's the face of the franchise and doing a terrific job. You got to hold him down tonight. If you can do that, you can beat the Astros, and Chris Sale is the right man for the job. He'll take aim at win number nine. The Sox and Astros, most of the celebration in this series has been Houston bound. Abreu and the Sox trying to take down the Strohs. Keep your eyes on it tonight. Game three next.
shoptoyota.com or your local Toyota dealer today. Let's go places. Blue Cross. Rolling Stone Country. That list extends to 30 for Steve Stone. However, the 10 that you want to know include Olivia Lane, and thanks to her for being here for a pregame concert. She did a spectacular job. You're a connoisseur of music anyway. Hey, that's high praise. Here's the lineup for the Houston Astros and A.J. Hinch. They have won the first two of the series. Altuve's been a big part of that. Tyler White in the fourth spot had two homers two nights ago. Gaddis catching for the first time back from double A. And Tony Kemp in his second major league start in the nine spot, Steve. Let's take a look at how Robin's going to line him up for defense tonight behind Chris Sale. Left to right, Melky Cabrera, Austin Jackson, and Adam Eaton. In the infield, Todd Frazier. Jimmy Rollins, Carlos Sanchez at second base tonight with Jose Abreu. Alex Avila gets a nod behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is none other than Chris Sale. He is the stopper on this ball club. He's going to have to stop a losing streak at home in this one. And he's looking for his ninth win with an ERA of 167. And the umpires for the game this evening. There they are. Adam Hamari behind the plate. Tom Haley and the crew chief is at first. Tony Randazzo at second. And Dan Bellino is at third. So on a beautiful night for baseball, 66 gorgeous degrees. We are ready. Get us a win tonight, Jason. I will do my best from up here in the booth. If I was playing shortstop, there'd be much less of a chance. Sale to Altuve. Chris Sale trying to become the first 9-0 pitcher in his first nine starts in eight years in the majors. Begins with strike one. Altuve four for eight two walks in this series. Good news is the Sox have neutralized 
his running game at least so far. They haven't been able to hold him down offensively. This guy is the leader of this ball club and surprisingly for leadoff hitter 26 driven in. Trying to check his swing and went around one and two to Altuve. He's had pretty good numbers lifetime against Chris Sale. It hasn't been a whole lot of at bats but he gets the, the bat on the ball. Very close. Avila tried to guide it over the plate two and two those numbers you were talking about Altuve five for 14 four singles and a double against the Sox left handers sale for Altuve and still two and two you can tell Chris really likes the competition the second best hitter in the league by average at this point against the best pitcher in the league because he got that one up there at ninety five. Crack foul again. It'll take a seventh pitch on Altuve, who, as we were talking about briefly last night, has been the best hitter against left handers the last five years in Major League Baseball. He's opened his stance a little more this year and it's given him more power. 2 2. He calls it off his body. You can almost feel the electricity in the ball yard tonight with Sale on the mound. The standing ovation, he comes out to a a big reception from Sox fans and rightfully so and he's got the K zone and there's a whole lot of people out there. It's the best night we've had by far. On this homestand and the best night we've had in quite some time. It's a left field Melky Cabrera on the move and Altuve retired in the first. That was an off speed slider. One of the few that Chris will throw. That was 77 miles an hour, but he realized it was a good battle against Altuve, who spoiled everything else. So he went to the off speed breaking ball away, got him out front, and a lazy fly ball to left. So one down for Springer for an Astros team that, as you mentioned, the batting average isn't great. Doesn't really matter, though, when you're putting up the home run numbers they have, top five. In Major League Baseball with 53 of them. Young lineup, too. A lot of guys just coming up through the major leagues. They showed so much promise last year that you expected they would get off to a good start. It hasn't worked out that way for them, but offensively, they're strong. They've got to get their starting rotation straightened out under the man you're looking at, A.J. Hinch. You mentioned yesterday a bunch of things he told us about the way he gathers information but demeanor wise he did not strike me at least as a manager who was seven under five hundred there's there's no panic in him. I think he realizes how much talent he has on this team and it's just a question of them starting to understand a little bit more get to know how the pitchers are going to pitch them consistently because it is a fairly young lineup. Three and one. And count goes full. He said something else. It was kind of interesting because Joe Madden said the same thing. Only Joe Madden took a different path. Joe Madden spent an inordinate amount of time in the minor leagues managing. He said the toughest thing, getting to know his players, getting to understand their personalities, and how to get the best out of each and every one. A.J. Hinch said the exact same thing, only he's taken a different path to the major leagues. On the ground at third, Todd Frazier gobbles it up and sends it along for out number two. Base is clear for Correa. This is one of the biggest differences in the Sox this year and the Sox in previous years. They've always had an inordinate amount of left handed starters. This year, when Johnny Danks was here, it was four. If you're going to have that many left hand starters, you have to have a very strong defensive third baseman. Todd Frazier brings that to the party. Chris Sale's going to throw some sliders, he's going to throw some fastballs in. A lot of our left handers like to cut the ball into right handers. Consequently, if you don't have a guy at third who can really pick it, you're going to get yourself in problems and give teams a lot of four outs in an inning. Two out here, and Correa swings through a 94 mile an hour fastball, a 21 year old shortstop hitting 273. This guy is the limit for this guy, and he has not really seen yet. What he's going to do in this league. Part of the revolution of taller shortstops coming through Major League Baseball. The average height a couple decades ago is 5'11. Correa is 6'3, 6'4. In the mold of Cal Ripken, actually. Ripken was a little over 
in the air right side Adam Eaton and Chris Sale has calmly navigated the first three batters. He'll hand it over to his offense in a scoreless tie. at that with this lineup. Eaton and Carlos Sanchez giving Brett Laurie a rare day off. Abreu, Frazier, Cabrera, Rollins in the sixth spot, Sands in the seventh spot. A little shifting for Robin today. Let's take a look at the defense and now A.J. Hinch is going to line him up behind Colin McHugh. It's Kemp, Marisnik, and Springer in the outfield with Valbuena, Correa, Altuve, and Gonzalez in the infield. Evan Gaddis behind the plate and Alexis pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Colin McHugh. See the ERA up there. 65% of the time this year he started off hitters on the first pitch with an off speed pitch. Not so there, a fastball strike. That was the 35% of the time when he started him off with a fastball. Thank you for providing that verbal pie chart. Eaton with a foul ball, nothing in two. Adam. 18 multiple hit games so far this season. McHugh has a very good curveball and he's added a cutter to it. And that's taken the velocity and shifted it down somewhat. He used to throw overhand curve four seam fastball. Now he's got a cutter and we're going to see that good curveball. There's a breaking ball that kicks away from Gaddis. And he completes the out with the toss to Marwin Gonzalez. First time you see this curveball. You can't really conceive of how quickly it breaks. The bottom just falls out of this. Evan Gaddis does a pretty nice job of shifting to his right, stopping the baseball from getting away. And one of the keys tonight, if possible, and of course, our Sox do not have the fastest team I've seen, but if they are in a base running situation, it would be wise to test Evan Gaddis, who went down to double A to polish up his catching somewhat. They caught four out of ten days down there and is catching in a major league game for the first time since September 28th 2014 so not at all last year with the Astros when the Astros got him they specifically said that we got him to be a designated hitter end of story situation has changed as Sanchez is down 0 and 2 I think they realize that they can get another bat along with the powerful bat of Gaddis in the lineup if he does move behind the plate on occasion. Well they just designated Eric Kratz for assignment one of those journeyman second catchers you see in the majors quite a bit. They called up uh, Max Stassi as well from Fresno he was just sent back after a couple days with Jason Castro on the paternity list. So they have had four catchers so far in the majors this season the Astros. Two and two from McHugh to Sanchez. That's there for strike three. 
Back to back punch outs for McHugh to open play tonight. And we tell you about our picks to click for this evening. Steve Stone is a runaway leader so far. He's got Carlos Sanchez, Jerry Sands for the crew, and I'm going to go with Alex Avila tonight. Not exactly a runaway at this point, but I am invoking the seldom used rule if your pick to click takes a called third the first time, you get another pick to click. That's 12 B6, right? Is that yeah, so I, I could shift Austin Jackson, but I'm going to stay. I'm going to show the confidence. You get to use that. Uh, it's little used, but it's it, little used. You get to choose how little used. Yes. Is that right? Judge and jury. I mean, you have to know all the rules to be able to implement them. It's a ball low to Abreu or utilize them to your advantage more aptly. Abreu, three hits of the series, three RBIs, and a seven game hit streak as he stands in. They're shifted around toward right center field for the big guy. And he hits it that way for him, way back. Springer at the wall, and Springer brought it in. Oh my goodness. What a play by George Springer. He timed it perfectly. He went back to the wall at the top of his leap. He hauled it back in. His name's Springer, and rightfully so. has been expanded to 25 for 32 it continues until 8 p.m. tonight you donate 25 dollars or more until 8 p.m. tonight that's what we're asking for White Sox charities the White Sox are matching all donations up to ten thousand dollars for the remaining campaign time I think it's a great cause and it not only helps young baseball players it helps a lot of people around the city of Chicago who need help White Sox charities have been terrific you know, we were talking about it last night with Corey Ray, and we showed you some pictures. The, the kid who came through the ACE program mm -hmm. through the White Sox went to the University of Louisville. There was a great story in Baseball America actually this morning about Corey Ray and his time at ACE and his time at Simeon here in Chicago. And he will be a force for years to come in Major League Baseball, it seems, playing for a tremendous Louisville program. Now we just have to see where he's picked in the draft the draft that is coming up. Fouled away by White who homered a couple times. There is a young Corey Ray before his time at Simeon in the Sox Jersey very focused young man very optimistic as well it's a great story on Baseball America if you want to check it out. Oh two and White takes outside ball and two strikes last time we saw White. Our boys didn't like it all that much. A couple of home runs, a double. He scored three runs. He drove in two. He made the club out of spring training. And now he's making the most of the chance he's got.
He's one of those guys. I mean, you look at somebody like Corey Ray, and you talked about the draft year last year, the junior uh, junior year, as we were discussing last night. Found away by White. He's a guy that was a four-year college player. He was at Western Carolina, not a venerable program, and just can hit. I mean, he's AJ Hinch said, "Look, he's a hitter. He can hit the ball. You got to find a place for that guy." Can't hit that one. 96 and up. Strike three. First punch out for sale. Time now for our Xfinity high speed action replay. And George Springer is 6 3. He needs every bit of that as he turns, goes up, times it perfectly, and hauls it in. He actually reached over the wall, then collided with the fence and held on. What a play by George Springer. One out for Gonzalez. He should have posters made of him with that pose down on the ground and give it out to family members for birthday gifts. I think he's going to remember that one. That one was a special, special play. Wasn't in the playoffs, obviously, and not in the World Series. Not going to remember it for that, but he will remember it for great timing and just an outstanding catch. That is a line drive right at Frazier, two down. Gonzalez is their jack of all trades and usually swings a pretty good bet when he gets an opportunity. A.J. Hinch knows he can play him just about anywhere and he gives you a great effort. This time he hits the ball pretty well. But fortunately, Todd Frazier right there. So five up, five down. A couple starts ago, Chris Sale had that bumpy first inning against the Twins. They got to him early on, and then nothing more after that, as now the Astros do have a base runner. Evan Gaddis wasn't waiting to see that slider deep in the count. No, Two he, out, one on. He saw a fastball. It wasn't Chris Sale's best. But in that, what Chris does try to do on occasion is keep a fastball around 91, 92, keep it away from the right-handers, hope that they roll over it and ground to the left side. Gaddis that time in a good at bat took that outside fastball and went to right field with it. So one on two out and Valbuena. Reason why Valbuena is playing is hitting a thousand against Chris Sale. Huge sample size too. The fan graphs folks are going to love that. He is one for one. Well I mean that's all the opportunity <laughs> he's had so he's got another <laughs> opportunity now. What life presents you. Lease is in there because of his third base play. He's also in part in there because they just don't have any choices. They have three lefties on the bench. They're loaded with left handers. And that's a pretty good situation to be in except when you pitch against the Sox ball club because of the left handed starters. Most teams have four of five or at the most. They have three of five. Right handed starters. So your left handers get a lot of work. Valbueno wants to know where it was. Ball and two strikes on him. Adam Hamari is calling low pitches tonight, and that pitch caught the lower part of the zone. Outside two and two on Valbuena. We said lefties pretty well this year at 263 compared to 196 against right handers. Coming off a year where he had 25 home runs. Too low, three and two. I would think that Jose Abreu would be behind Gaddis here as you look from the side. And a good call by Dan Bellino on the appeal. He did not swing. So Abreu is indeed behind Gaddis. Speed is not a big part of Evans' game. Cold strike three, sale, bookend, strikeouts. And the K zone for sale is exuberant early, no score.
report to Miller time later in the game, brought to you by Miller Lite. I see your Miller tees, and I raise you every Monday through the season. The White Sox will feature a flash sale in which 200 tickets and select lower level seating categories for an upcoming game will be available for just $10. Each sale runs for 24 hours or whenever all the tickets are gone. For full details, visit whitesocks.com slash flash sale. How come you don't how come you don't have to do the tongue twisters like slash flash sale? We're selling seashells by the seashore well, later. One of the reasons is that you are becoming known as Mr. Segway. Keep me off those scooters, though, as long as it's a verbal segue. <laughs> Todd Frazier leads off the second and races for strike one from Colin McHugh. Frazier back from the flu yesterday, took a walk, went one for three. That was a cutter that McHugh threw over the inside corner. Usually don't want to keep it, and Gannis wants a curveball. And he gets it, nothing in two. A lot of times, a catcher will make a call because he knows the scouting report. And he makes a call the pitcher doesn't agree with it but the pitcher goes along with it that's what happened there and McHugh on the good curveball got the strike. Upstairs ball and two strikes. You're talking about the cutter before the game and about how it maybe affects a pitcher and adding that cutter. Yeah I, I really believe that the cutter subtracts velocity on the fastball when used over the long haul. There's a lot of managers. Joe Madden is one of them. And I talked to him about why Tampa Bay brings up so many good young pitchers. He said, because my philosophy has been teach the fastball, give them a straight change, and the overhand curve. Those three pitches in that order fastball, straight change, overhand curve. Forget about the cutter unless you absolutely are desperate and need it. On the ground, second base side, Altuve flags it down, and he's late. Frazier is in. Without the radical shift, that's a ground ball to straightaway second base. But because Altuve was playing up the middle, he makes a good play. Gets it there, but not quite in time. As Todd Frazier beats out an infield hit, the first base runner against McHugh, and a promising way to start the second inning. Well, Todd Frazier's got a couple hits on the infield recently yep. now. He's going to chase down Adam Eaton maybe for the league lead in infield hits. What do you think? I think he's got a while to go yet. Melky straightens out for a bunt, takes a strike. Well, Tuve's only made two errors this year, so he's become a much better defensive second baseman. That was something early in his career that was a problem for him, but he certainly smoothed that out along with the rest of his game. Nothing in two on Melky Cabrera, who's got a couple of hits in the series, including an RBI triple yesterday. Mentioned Eaton's lead on infield hits, by the way. He's got 13, and nobody else has more than nine. Well, factor in bunting with the fact that he does make contact, and making contact, especially when you're in a defensive posture with two strikes, you're going to hit a lot off the end of the bat. He's able to beat those up. Two strikes from McHugh. Melky got a piece of it and stays alive. Well, Melky, last couple of weeks, has put up some large numbers with eight of his 15 RBIs the last 15 games. And I like the fact that he's tough to strike out. He's going to put the ball in play and then he's going to pressure the defense to execute. One and two, one of the toughest guys to strike out in Major League Baseball, just 15 all year. Now Todd Frazier is measuring McHugh in that he's taking a walking lead and waiting to see if McHugh stops him. If he gets that walking lead, he's able to steal a lot more easily. Now, he's not the fastest guy around. He is a good base stealer. And he's tried it out a couple of times with McHugh. McHugh has held the ball and stopped him at first base. One and two. Frazier holds. Cabrera pops it up. 
Valbuena at third drifting for out number one. Well, Colin McHugh, his last four starts, he has been much improved. 756 in his first four for an Astros team that was 10 under in April, and he's pushed that opponent, uh, opponent's average down, but the home run number is up. If you're around the plate, and that's one of the things that we have heard about Colin McHugh and his problems this year, he's been wild in the strike zone. A lot of times that's worse than just being plain wild. Wild in the strike zone is your catcher wants one. Low and away, you get it on the inner portion. The guy hits it out. He is out of small Berry College in Northwest Georgia. Jimmy Rollins stands in. Two for eight so far here in the series. The 37 year old. Played over 2,000 games at shortstop. One and one. It was a break because it was a breaking ball that nipped the outside corner. But it evens the count. McHugh grew up playing the clarinet and the saxophone. But we had to get together. Play that clarinet. Start a woodwind band? Yes. You and you and him? I was exceptionally mediocre at the clarinet. You were fourth chair and there were three players. It took me two and a half years to figure out that this wasn't going to be my future. Ball and two strikes on Rollins. Frazier was shuffling back to first and Rollins swings and misses. Strike three. Third strikeout for McHugh. Our Menards pitch tracks will show you a curveball that's out of the zone, and the best curveballs are out of the zone. They have tight rotation. The hitter identifies the fastball, and all of a sudden, if he goes after it, the ball just disappears. And that was the case with that curveball with Rollins. So two down for Sands with Frazier at first after the single just outside the infield dirt. Thirty ninth at bat this year for Sands. By the way, the clarinet is one of those instruments that if you're not good at it, it is bad for the people around you. Yes, my family felt the same way, which is why mercifully I gave up the violin and the drums. Yeah, it took three instruments for me to figure out that I better become a player. That it was it was you and not the instrument. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the strike to Sands. Got three hits and 13 tries this year against lefties. A 240 hitter against righties. So two thirds of his hits against righties like McHugh. McHugh last year, 19 and 7. There goes Frazier, and Sands sprays it foul. That's what he's been waiting for, and he did get the walking lead. You see him right there with that one quick step. What pitchers are taught is hold the baseball and make sure the runner is stationary. If you don't, you're probably going to give up a lot of stolen bases, and Todd Frazier had that one stolen. Two strikes on Sands. Frazier's going again. This is in the dirt, and he picked the right pitch. And once again, he got off to a running start. And McHugh so intent on that wipeout curveball that he doesn't pay attention to him. So man in scoring position and Gaddis does the best he can do. That curveball is tough to corral and Gaddis catching his first game in the major leagues this year. He's got his work cut out for him tonight. One and two in the dirt again and chested down by Gaddis. First time in two years catching. What's the biggest difference for Gaddis getting back to the majors behind the plate? He's going to be blocking the low pitches because he's going to be able to absorb the baseball. He did catch many times during the course of his life, so he knows how to do that. He knows how the pitches move, and once he gets to know each and every one of these pitchers, he'll have no problem there. But blocking low pitches is not easy. Sand shoots it to right, and it hooks foul. Catcher has to realize that. 
The ball will do different things depending on what he calls. You call a fastball in the dirt, the ball is going to come straight at you. You call a curveball in the dirt, and when the ball hits, it's going to back up in the other direction. So, right handed curveball to right hand hitter, the ball is going to move away to the right hand hitter, but when it hits the dirt, it's going to spin back toward the right hand hitter, and the catcher has got to get used to that. 2 2 coming. That was a hanger. That was the most hittable curveball that McHugh has thrown. And fortunately for him and unfortunately for Jerry, he got over the top of it. That one's a roller. Doesn't break late. If a curveball rolls, a hitter can certainly follow it all the way. And he was able to battle it and follow it off. Frazier at second, two out, two and two. Missed the plate, three and two. Alex Avila Avila. next. That's a stereo Avila. Yeah. Become a mind reader. You gave up the clarinet and picked up ESP. And I picked up Avila. Three and two. Shot to center field. The Sox have the lead for sale, one nothing. RBI number six, and it's a glaring example of how this game is won or lost 90 feet at a time. If McHugh doesn't give up that stolen base, there's runners at first and third. This is a good piece of hitting by Jerry Sands. Another one of those curveballs that doesn't break sharply but rolls just over the head of Altuve. And the first run of the ball game. So good heads up base running by Todd Frazier who means so much to this team in every aspect of his game. And the Sox break on top. The Sox have only led in this series for a half inning that came two nights ago in the bottom of the fifth. They led three two until the Astros got a run in the top of the sixth as Avila grounds it foul. Many times a ball club will say to their ace, okay, there's your run, now hold them. But tonight, I think you're gonna need a few more. This is a good hitting and good running Astro team. They play Avila to pull on 0 1. And nothing in two. It was a high cutter. Alex thought it was up. He inquired to Adam Hamari and he said, no. Was out of the zone. I probably would have called it a ball. You can hear that from all the way up here, huh? I can. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm a lip reader, especially when the lips are facing the other way. And in a mask. <laughs> Nothing in two. Yeah, the dirt. Gaddis has been very busy. Every base runner is going to have to realize that Nikki was going to throw a lot of curveballs in the dirt, and Gaddis, by and large, has done a nice job. He's able to make sure no advancement here. Again, you see how that ball hits and then goes back toward the plate. He didn't try to catch it. That's the key. Bring the elbows in, angle the body forward. When it hits off your chest protector, it's going to roll in front of you. One, two. That's high. Two balls, two strikes on Avila. These are two very patient teams, both in the top ten. In pitches seen per plate appearance in Major League Baseball, the Astros are number one. And Alex, one of the most patient of the lot. Sands at first, two down, a run in. Three balls, two strikes. This is a very fast outfield left to right. Marisnik. An excellent defender in center with good speed. We saw the talent of Springer in right. And Kemp, very quick in left. And time called. Well, already saw Springer steal a home run from Jose Abreu in the first. This pitch number 28 of the inning for McHugh. 
Sands will run three and two. Right into the shift. Altuve for the final out of the second inning, but the Sox take the lead on a Jerry Sands two out single. It's one nothing and sail back after this. Hear from you during tonight's game. Use the hashtag White Sox Talk on Twitter. Be sure to follow at CSN White Sox all season long for your latest news on your favorite team. Chris Sale in his very young career already in the top 10 and bearing down on Doc White. He of 27 wins back in 1907. Ted Lyons would be the next, and he may be. Somebody that sale catches even tonight, although the strikeout numbers are down for Chris, he's gone deeper into games. I think that's by design. I think he realizes he can strike out probably as many as he'd like to in the neighborhood of 10, 12 a game if he wants to. He has kept it somewhat less because he wants to go deeper and keep the Sox out of that bullpen as long as possible. We mentioned. Chris Sale is the first major league pitcher to go 8 and 0 in his first eight starts since Brandon Webb in 2008 with Arizona who that year was not nearly as dominant as Sale has been three six inning starts in his first six for Webb. Brandon Webb a completely different type of pitcher though he won the Cy Young Award he was a sinker baller and for those of you who might recall he came up with the Arizona Diamondbacks he was an eighth round draft pick out of Kentucky and Mike Rizzo then the scouting director decided to take a look at him they loved the action of the ball although they realized he wasn't overpowering and he parlayed it into a very good career but he didn't have Chris Sale stuff not many do breaking ball off the plate two and two on Marisnik was one for five in the series. Very slim left hander. Got him the nickname slim back in the day. Ground ball foul. I have a question for you. What do you have? Get your choice of any shortstop you want of the three I'm going to give you. Okay. Carlos Correa, Francisco Lindor, and Xander Bogarts. All very young shortstops, all very talented. Who do you want? Mr. Fence Straddler? <laughs> 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Third punch out for Sale. Take a look at the catch of Alex Avila on a fastball that moves out of sight. Now he wants the ball in. Chris gets it away, but he's able to reach out and snag it. Not an easy task when it's around 94-95. Marisnik with no chance whatsoever. So I actually I've seen Xander Bogarts more in person 
saw him in AAA for a, a couple of stints. Yes. Is that an editorial comment or is that part of your decision making? Well, it's, making? it's the walk up, it's the on ramp to the choice that I'm about to make. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take Xander Bogarts of the three. Way to go. Yeah. There is no wrong answer because I don't think you can. You can't go I, wrong, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with any of those three. But they are three good ones. And by I, the way, now Manny Machado is playing shortstop yeah. after the injury to J.J. Hardy, although he's not a shortstop for Baltimore normally, but he started a shortstop. You can throw them into the equation, and I'll take him. But that wasn't really fair because I didn't give you that choice at the beginning. Goalposts really do tend to move, don't they? Foul ball, left side, one and two for Kep. It was two for three last night. I, I, what you're saying speaks to the depth of the young shortstop position in Major League Baseball right saying, now. I, I'm just giving you guys in the American League, but there are great shortstops all over. A great third baseman, too. I mean, look at Nolan Arenado from Colorado. Fouled away again by Kemp. Talk about one of the best with both the glove, can hit the ball out of the ballpark. I mean, he can do pretty much everything. And when Machado is playing third, he's rated among the best in baseball. We've seen a resurgence in both third basemen, which, by the way, as far as the Hall of Fame is concerned, very few third basemen in the history of this game have made the Hall of Fame, which is somewhat surprising because it's always been known as a power position. I think we'll see more with this coming wave of players. Two and two from Sale. Second base, Sanchez for out number two. The first at bat was a battling at bat for Jose Altuve, won by Chris Sale. He starts him out 93. Misses. That hook just off the corner. Altuve does a nice job of following that one as he does with that one. And then the slider in. Followed up by the soft slider away, and he wins the battle. Basically everything away that first time. He figures, that took too long. I'm just going to make it out on the first pitch. Sales given up just one hit in the first three innings. He's been out there. one nothing sucks. Thanks for joining us. Our prize shelf has some new items on it today. It does, and this is something that you're probably not going to find again, and that is a Mayor Richard M. Daly, number one White Sox fan ball. And on one side, it has the mayor with Frank Thomas. The other side, it has the mayor with our owner, Jerry Reinsdorf. So it's a classic baseball. That's just one of the things. You also have the Gene Honda autographed baseball. And of course, a couple of statues of indeterminate nature, along with the ever present plush Jose Abreu, whatever that thing was. We also have a Jose Abreu youth t shirt. Yeah, and that's that's the key is that the milkman t shirt is regular size, and the Abreu t shirt is for the little people. Milkman t shirt tonight at the ball yard. Ground ball for Jackson, and one away. 
That Abreu shirt, by the way, is a donation from Sox marketing czar Brooks Boyer, who I learned today, actually, you're talking about great third baseman, was named after Brooks Robinson. That was a big baseball fan. That was one of the great third basemen. Brooks Boyer or Brooks Robinson? Brooks Boyer was a terrific basketball mm -hmm. player, captain of the Notre Dame basketball team. Strike one to Adam Eaton, who struck out in the first. Well, when in at third, thinking that Adam might be thinking about laying one down, although he is well off the line. Last two weeks or so for Adam Eaton with an off day mixed in here and there. 364 the average, eight of his 18 multi hit games as he tries to track down the newest Washington National, Daniel Murphy, in that category. And you take a look at the 11 walks, which for a leadoff hitter is advantageous. On base percentage this year for Eaton, right around 430 for the season. 410 or so slugging right around 430 ground ball back to McHugh and two down Sox fans join us Saturday May 21st at 110 against the Royals first 20,000 fans ages 21 and over get a 25th ballpark anniversary canvas presented by Miller Lite the original light Pilsner and official beer of your Chicago White Sox purchase your tickets today by visiting White Sox .com or calling 866 Sox game and the milkman shirt looks good on a Sox fan doesn't it it's a handsome shirt yeah. outside to Sanchez with two out nobody on in fact you were telling me that it's a milkman emoji shirt it is yeah you use emojis every once and again don't you I do but I don't have the milkman emoji on my phone there it is take a look at that Striking resemblance to Melky Cabrera. It's a good looking shirt. In the air for Sanchez. Correa is underneath at a 1 2 3 inning for Colin McHugh. Sox maintain their 1 0 lead after three. The Astros come along. The Quicken Loans rocket arms. The first career starts by Chris Sale against these Astros. Three and one is ERA .56. 47 strikeouts and 32 innings with just four walks. And the opponents, the Astros, hitting 165 against them. There's the line so far. Three strikeouts, three innings, only one hit, no walks. As Sale was given his run in the second inning. It's up to him to protect it until the offense can 
Strike some more. That was on a Jerry Sands RBI single as Frazier plays this one foul. 0 and 1 on Springer, who is the reason this isn't a 2 nothing game. If you assume everything happened the same later on, Springer took a home run from Jose Abreu in the first inning on a beautiful jumping catch. Springer showed you what kind of talent he has. He's pretty fast, got a very good arm, and he can hit the ball a long way. Now, he is going to strike out a lot more than a lot of young players, but when he makes contact, the ball jumps off his bat. Down to one knee for that one. Nothing in two. It's getting warmer, but blankets are still a good idea. It was nice today. Chilly tonight. We'll see the Royals coming in here for three starting tomorrow, then the Indians to finish off this 10 game, nine day homestand. And there are tickets available. In fact, some pretty good tickets. Should be a wonderful weekend weather wise. And the Indians, a good team. So the Sox, who haven't played a whole lot in their division, now face their two closest competitors. Starting play today, Sox were up two and a half on Cleveland, four on Kansas City, which split a twin bill against Boston, and then five on the Tigers. Springer, a first round draft pick of these Astros back in 2011. The 11th player chosen overall, and he looks at a called third. Fourth strikeout for sale. Equal opportunity strikeouts. Two swinging, two call. And Alex Avila helps him out a bit by easing that into the zone. He actually had the glove moving. Seemingly before the ball got there. That was a good job of buying a strike for Chris Sale. So one down with that, and Correa to bat at three for 12 in the set. Strike one. Fly out to Eaton and right for Correa to finish off a one, two, three. First for sale. This is trouble if it stays fair and it doesn't. Strike two. Hey, by the way, you were just featured on the video board, Steve Stone. I was. That was the year that I was getting triple meal money, <laughs> and I was able to actually beat the Royals. Wow. No razor in George, sight. George though. Order, Oscar Gamble, Chet Lemon, all homered. That was. Um, that was called the Southside Hitmen. Yeah. You might remember that team. Nice to pitch behind those guys. Very huh? exciting. They scored a lot of runs, and I think we're still waiting to turn our first double play from that season. <laughs> it wasn't a good defensive team, but they could really hit. Rollins at shortstop retires his counterpart. Down goes Correa, and time for. Soxmath tonight no geography we promise use the hashtag Soxmath on Twitter first correct answer wins a prize from the prize shelf take the number of Sox minor league affiliates playing in North Carolina now multiply by the number of multi hit games Adam Eaton had entering today subtract the number of American League players with more home runs than Todd Frazier entering today and add Steve Stone's career major league baseball complete game total. Do you know the last one there Do you know how many complete games you had. I actually don't. Really? No, I have no idea. Avila with the catch. Well, one of them was shown just a little <laughs> while on the jumbo drive. So you had at least one. One nothing socks.
on Direct TV in Des Moines, Iowa this evening. Sox fans celebrate, even if you're in Des Moines, celebrate a special birthday or anniversary or even host a business function in a Diamond Suite in a White Sox game. Diamond Suites can accommodate groups from 10 to 100 guests and single game packages include a great food menu as well as beverages and parking passes. To purchase, visit WhiteSox.com slash group. Bottom four, Jose Abreu looks at strike one after a long fly out first time up. Once again, they are shifting around toward right center for him. Breaking ball, nothing in two. Last time up. Bidding for a home run on a low fastball. Springer at the top of his leap, able to bring it back. What a play. He caught one of those slats in the fence, too. That couldn't have been great for the spine, but he will take the out, certainly. Ball high, one and two on Abreu. Are you familiar with the direction of Jose's hits by any chance? You know, I've been studying up recently. I know he went to right field in the first inning. The question is, where can we get such information? It's difficult to, to call that from the archives. Oh, wow. my goodness, the archives are right here. There it is. So it's pretty hard to defend him any which way, but you can see that the Astros have decided the way McHugh is going to pitch him, they're going to shade him a couple of steps to right center. 16, 9, 12, right to left. On the infield this time, Gonzalez off the bag, and McHugh the coverage for out number one. Eric Ibar, you might remember him with the Angels. Now he plies his trade with the Atlanta Braves. Was taken to a medical facility to have a chicken bone removed from his throat. So apparently Ooh. causing him some discomfort. No, no timetable as to how long it had been troubling him, but quite obviously this was before the game. And their interim manager, Brian Snitker, said that the poor guy was scared to death, and I can't hardly blame him. I mean, that, that doesn't sound like any fun. I mean, from what we were reading, he came to the ballpark. Yeah, feeling discomfort. Yeah, couldn't talk very well. You've never, you've never done anything like that, have you? What was your weirdest injury? Weirdest injury? Yeah, like Brian Greasy, I think I remember the, the football quarterback tripped over his dog and fell down the stairs at one point. That's happened to a few people, by the way. The dog thing or the chicken bone thing? No, tripping over your animal, depending on what it is and the size of it. Don't get that with goldfish terribly often, do you? No. No, I don't think so. I have, oh, to, think, I have to think about this. I'll let you know. Hmm. Wasn't there somebody, too? I don't remember who it was. Somebody that was trying to iron his shirt while it was on and ended up on the DL. Yeah, that probably isn't a, a real good thing. That wasn't you, was it? No, that definitely was not me. <laughs> One and two to Frazier. Went upstairs and he punched it foul. The time he tried to throw a high fastball by him, couldn't quite get it there. One, two. He got it by him this time at 92 up the ladder and McHugh earns his fourth strikeout. As we tried to do last time this time he went up a little higher and so did Todd up and out of the zone You see where Gaddis wants it and McHugh gets it there. And the one guy in our ball club that does that consistently well is Jose Quintana. One of the best in baseball at changing eye level staying down with the slider down with the fastball and then higher than high with his fastball to wipe a hitter out. Why is that so hard for a hitter? I mean, it, it 
because it looks really good. I mean obviously you can't get low enough. Most guys don't crouch a whole lot in this day and age of baseball. So you're standing there. You see the fastball and because it looks so good you go after it. But the ball is a lot faster upstairs than it is downstairs. And so you can't catch up with it. Into the sky and Valbuena brings in out number three. So McHugh has retired seven straight. The Sox hang on to a one nothing lead in the series finale for Mr. Sale. Astros, here's your answer to Sox, Matt. There are three minor league affiliates in North Carolina. Adam Eaton, 18 multi-hit games. Frazier tied for the lead in the AL in home runs, so zero. And you, Mr. Stone, had 43 complete games. The winner, Logan Winkler, 24. The answer is 97 tonight. Well, congratulations to Logan Winkler. Henry's cousin, actually, I think. 43 complete games. Jeez, only took me 22 years. <laughs> Did not. No. Not quite, but seemingly. You uh, you undersell your career a little much, Mr. Stone. It was some tough going in the early stages. Yeah. I think when you start out five and nine, six and eight, and six and eleven, you get the feeling that maybe you won't wind up in the Hall of Fame. That's when I got in the restaurant business. Hello, just in case this thing doesn't work out. You make a killer. Chili, though. You really do. <laughs> oh, 2. Gonzalez on the ground. Abreu stabs it. Sale is on the spot for out number one. Okay, let's take a look at Chris Sale and watch him early in counts and see what he does. This time, it was a fastball, but low and away, he invites Gonzalez to go after it and he makes an out. This is 86. This is one of those here. I'll throw you a fastball. It won't be a real good one, and maybe you can ground it to the left side. He does the same thing with the slider. That was 81 miles an hour. Didn't try to hit the corner. Threw it right down the middle. And early in each and every one of those counts, he wasn't trying to strike anybody out. He was expecting some contact, getting a quicker out than a five or six pitch strikeout or walk would show. Well, you talked about you're talking about your own career, starting off six wins, yep. etc. You have to keep moving be kinetic as a pitcher right I mean sale has gotten better this year from an already sterling last season yeah I, look last year he struck out 274 men but he realized he was using a whole lot of pitches and maybe in certain instances he wasn't going as deep in the ball game as he would like Rollins at shortstop Gaddis retired two down so Chris knows something and that is as 
the ace of the staff. And even though Jose Quintana is probably a 1A on just about every team, including this one, Chris Sale knows that he's got to go deep into the ball game to save the bullpen. It's no reflection on the bullpen whether they're going well or poorly. It's just that he knows if he keeps them out of games, they'll be stronger for the next night. And then if Jose Quintana goes deeper in the game, then they'll be very strong for the night after that. Both of these guys are looked to by their team to take the game deep, and they both do it. They have been two stabilizing forces back-to-back -back days for the Sox this year. Team currently on its longest losing streak of the year with four straight the loss column and six of seven. But the good news is they're still up in the division by two and a half opening play today. Chris has had the Astros completely off balance when they're looking for something off speed he's throwing them a good fastball when they're trying to gear off that good fastball he's taking something off either the straight change or the soft slider. Valbuena lays off two balls two strikes. Strike three down at the knees. Sale with his fifth strikeout for the K zone. One nothing. Sox four and a half deep. Is that Bill Melton's cave that we're going to see? Well, that's good. I like that. Thank you, our Chuck. Look forward to that. Jimmy Rollins, bottom five. McHugh, who has been a first pitch strike machine, gets ahead of Rollins and this finds the seats. I always feel like I'm back in high school when I'm talking to Chuck Garfine being a Homewood Flossmore Viking. You guys have an inordinate amount of folks in the media here that are former Homewood Flossmoreans. That's what you call it? I think we're pretty ordinate. Oh, and two. Scott Merkin, is he one of those guys? Scott Merkin's not very ordinate at all. It's a strikeout for Rollins, one down here in the fifth. Jerry Sands drove in the only run of the ball game, and with that White Sox run, E Click Lending has donated $100 to the Pat Tillman Foundation, supporting military veterans and their families. 
So good piece of hitting by Sands as he took a curveball low and away he hit it off the end of the bat. It came after a stolen base by Frazier and that is the total scoring these two clubs in fact it's only been three hits in the game. They've all been singles. Sands Frazier Gaddis. One and one to Jerry Sands, who the same offseason was acquired by the Red Sox, then traded to the Dodgers. Talking about this with him a couple weeks ago. He basically was never a Red Sox player. He showed up at Fenway for a couple of pictures at one point and then got shipped away. One and two on Sands. Sands originally came up with the Dodgers and at one point was thought of as a terrific prospect. And so for him, it just didn't work out. I mean, he's big, he's strong, he can hit the ball a long way, but sometimes you you find it with another team or two down the road. Nobody knows why the light clicks on. It just clicks on later for most. Two and two. Breaking ball low, picked by the Dodgers, then the Red Sox, then the Pirates. Waivers to Tampa Bay, and then signed as a free agent with the Indians. Three and two. Fouled off. Seen a lot of pitches so far tonight. Sanchez. I think he's followed McHugh pretty well, better than most of the guys. On the ball club tonight. McHugh's been very tough. Sands has fouled off some good pitches. And that base hit in the second inning was on a curveball low and away. Good piece of defensive hitting. Well, by the way, thank you for explaining the art and the value of Twitter to me because huh. we find out that John Smoltz was the man who ironed his chest <laughs> while, while he had the shirt on. Sands takes strike three. He thought it was inside. And back to back strikeouts for McHugh. We remind you that Friday, June 10th, come see the White Sox take on the Royals at 7 10 p.m. All fans invited to stay for a spectacular postgame fireworks show presented by Magellan Corporation. Purchase tickets today by visiting whitesox.com or calling 866 Sox Game. If you notice, Mike Leary, now that he has taken the helm, the printing has gotten substantially bigger on the promos. You can see it from Berwyn. I don't know if it's for you or for me, <laughs> but this is the largest printing I've ever seen. I think you're you're underselling that. I think you can see it for the sea of tranquility. <laughs> it is. Yes, yeah, very large, but easy to read nonetheless. Mike Leary has quadfocals, <laughs> evidently. <laughs> Our fearless producer. Back from his hockey realm. One strike on Alex Avila. That's uh, inside, ball to strike. Both pitchers dominating tonight as the Sox try to get a run or two more for their ace, Chris Sale. Colin McHugh throwing it almost equally as well, but the key is almost. He has yielded a run. Two and one on Avila. Chris Sale has been cruising along so far. Not a whole lot of balls to the outfield as well. Just two fly ball outs. One to Altuve, one to Correa in the first inning. Three balls, one strike on Avila. Love to keep the inning alive at the very least. Austin Jackson comes to bat. And if he's not successful, you lead off with Eaton in the next inning. High ball four. One on two out for Austin Jackson. And that walk is the first walk issued by either pitcher tonight. 
There you see some pretty impressive stats. Four and two thirds, a couple of hits with six strikeouts, and that lone walk we just saw. And sails in for a strike to Austin Jackson. Chris Sale trying to get to 9 and 0 oh in his first nine starts. I mean, the, the win as a stat is so difficult to make sure that you have, even if you pitch well. I mean, the amount of bounces, the amount of outlandish success you have to have to go 9 and 0 oh in nine games, my goodness. Jason Ed Seacott, who won his first 12 in one season many years ago. But he would be in sole possession of second place were he to come away victorious this evening. Two and one for Jackson. Avila at first. Challenged him with a fastball. And two and two. And Austin has had pretty good luck and probably has seen McHugh more than anybody in his lineup. See if this helps him. He grounded out the first time up. He got him swinging, so McHugh strikes out the side in the fifth. One nothing lead still stands for the Sox in sale. Sox left hander. It's been an unbelievable pitcher's duel tonight. Chris Sale getting the best of it so far, but it's only one to nothing, and Sale has to keep rolling right along. This is a good lineup, and Chris Sale has made him look futile in the early going. Hopefully that continues. Uh, a one to nothing lead is a tenuous and precarious lead. Especially with the way the Astros hit home runs for the season, more than 50 for the year, top five in Major League Baseball, and Sale. Will go against Jake Marisnik. First here in the sixth. And he goes shopping for the first pitch. Sanchez to Abreu, one down. There's an example of what Chris has done in this latest run of exceptional pitching. That was 89 miles an hour. It was what is termed a batting practice fastball. It's not really a straight change. It's not really his best fastball. But he throws it just off the outside corner and invites. Jake to make the first out on one pitch and he obliges by hitting it right at Sanchez at second. That brings one out for Kemp. 
who flinches and takes strike number one. Only 69 pitches and we're one out into the sixth inning. That has been vintage sale from this year. Shortstop Rollins to gone on three pitches. Time for tonight's edition of Sticks and Stone, where we ask Steve Stone to go deep in the annals of Steve Stone history to tell us how <laughs> Steve Stone did against a former Houston Astro, Larry Durker. Well, you know, Larry Durker was an excellent pitcher. You do know that. He also was very strong. And he could hit the ball a long way. See, this is a trap. Yes. With the pitcher up there. I absolutely have no idea how I did against him. He is gone from my memory banks. And there's a shot to left base hit for Altuve who's on with two outs second hit for the Astros tonight. You got most pitchers out you'd assume right. Not the real good hitting ones. Yep, although Larry hit right handed. So you got a better shot. Yeah I had a better shot but I'm thinking you wouldn't have put him up there if I got him out all the time. There ah, would be no could, purpose to it. Could be a trick question. It could be. But. I will not fall for a canard from you guys or something along those lines. You don't want to be hung by your own <laughs> petard. <laughs> Two out one on Altuve the speedster and a foul ball for Springer. Well, he wasn't waiting around at all. He picked on the first ball fastball. Little something on it. Ninety three on the outer portion and Springer. Tried to take it out of the ballpark. He's hit nine of them this year. If Altuve gets a little aggressive at first base, Chris can pick him off, and he's got a good lead. To home on a ground ball to third. Frazier, the short way, inning over. Altuve is single, no harm done. Still one nothing after five and a half. For ERA into our series opener with the defending champion Royals. Join us for the first pitch at 7 on CSN Chicago. I'll plan to join you. Please do. I would invite you here. Thank you. Get here around 8. <laughs> Pacific. <laughs> McHugh to the top of the order and Adam Eaton who looks at ball one. Now here's the advantage of the base on balls drawn by Avila. Didn't look like much, didn't come to much last inning, but it allows Eaton to lead it off and let's see if he can make the most of it. 2 and 0, good start. Out again, three balls, no strikes. McHugh is starting to get under the fastball. 
And usually when a pitcher does that, he's going to leave the ball up high. And under it is keeping your fingers on the side of the baseball instead of on top of it. That time he did stay on top and threw it right down the middle. We we're starting to lean toward the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. That will happen on occasion, but not if you keep your fingers on top of the ball. Eaton lines it to center, and that carries over Marisnik. All the way to the wall, Eaton on the gas pedal. He races for third and is in there sliding. Toughest catch for any center fielder is a line drive hit right at him, and that time Marisnik took a step in. From the high home camera, we'll see this one misplayed, and by the time Marisnik gets back, he can't haul it in. So off the glove, to the wall, and a meet to third base. And a perfect way to hit with the infield in at all four positions. The fourth triple of the year. That's one more than the Astros have as a team and some empathy at third for Marisnik from Eaton who's played center and seen those Adam balls for his career. Sanchez flips it to left and a running grab by Kemp secures out number one. Tony Kemp. Coming on and getting rid of the ball quickly after he catches it. One thing to go down with a sliding grab, but realizing that Adam Eaton was speed at third base, Kemp got it in quickly, leaving it to Abreu. Take the fly out here, that would get a run home. A long fly out. He was robbed by Springer of a home run in the first. Infield in with one down. Abreu buckles for strike one. Lead off triple for Eaton. Trying to double the lead for Sale. Abreu with three sacrifice flies this year. Oh and two. Well, you never need a run, but a leadoff triple, you'd really like it. Give a little cushion to Chris Sale, who's throwing the ball unbelievably well, but that two run lead will make things a lot more comfortable. And here's the hook. It's a good one, Abreu. Punches out swinging on three pitches. Time now for our greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T Mobile. First 20 games, Jose Abreu was off to a very slow start. Last 20 games, he's doubled the RBI, the on base plus slugging, and multi hit games, although. That at bat for him very frustrating. Yeah, he'll want that one back. And now it's up to Frazier. Four pitches ago, Eaton was at third, nobody out. Fly out to left, three pitch strikeout, and McHugh is nearly off the hook as Frazier turns away from a breaking ball. That is a huge run 90 feet away. Would be a huge lift to the ball club if Todd Frazier can find a way. To drive him home. High fastball, one and one. That's how he struck him out in the fourth inning. And that fan watching the game on his phone. We appreciate the viewership, however, it sure. comes. Two and one to Frazier. And Eaton's got to come down the line. This is going to be a cutter. 
And that was a perfect pitch. So the eye identifies fastball. Just a little movement at the tail end. It's about as good as it gets. Two and two. Three balls, two strikes. Well, runner at third, nobody out. They say you're supposed to get a run about 85% of the time. You'd like to get that guy home. If you don't, no harm done, at least for now. Frazier trying to do it on 3 2. In the air, left field, Kemp has a play. And the Astros dodge a sixth inning run. To the seventh we go. One nothing for sale on the Sox. MLB.com ballpark the official U.S. cellular field app for your iPhone and Android smartphone perfectly complements your trip with ballpark maps concessions guides check in prizes and more download MLB.com ballpark today or visit whitesocks.com slash ballpark app. So we asked Steve earlier oh, you're sitting here I can talk to you uh, how you did against Larry Durker. Yes. Uh, I mean, you didn't give up a hit. Congratulations. Wow. You got the pitcher out. How about that. See that's a that's a no win situation for you there that we put you in. Well true uh, but Larry was a good friend of mine and the fact that apparently I gave him no hits he became a better friend of mine. <laughs> Is that how it goes. Yes. Guys at second you don't care for he, very he, much. He wasn't a little left hand hitter which drove me to distraction and the bat explodes. Correa hits the old bat detonator. Well, that was a straight change and Correa got it off the end of the bat you see the cupped bat. So he caught it off the end good straight change and bye bye bat. See that much more on fastballs than you do a change up. He was just out in front and. Unfortunately for him and the bat, he made just a little contact. None there, 0 and 2. How about three pitches to dispatch Correa? Strikeout number six for sale. The K zone, absolutely ecstatic. As well, they should be. That fastball up and away, and with each successive pitch, it got a little bit faster and a little bit higher. Ball outside, 1 0. So, Sale coming off a complete game and an already 
his second complete game of the year. Both having come on the road thus far. First one was a shutout of Tampa Bay. And that shutout, he pretty much had to go nine because that run wasn't scored till the ninth inning, and Chris was hanging around. Probably at the top of his pitch limit. That was a really good slider, one of the best he's thrown. Shaved off the inside part of the plate. And White couldn't have hit it. Looks like he gave up on it, only to see it called. One and two. Went fastball up. Those two pitches back to back. I mean, it's got to be terribly <laughs> difficult for a hitter. I think just about everything Chris throws is terribly difficult to hit. 80 pitches and no trouble at all. One, two. Outside, never had the plate. That's one of the things he's had a hard time doing, too white specifically, and that is shaving off the outside corner with the backdoor slider. Fastball nailed it. Strike three again. Well, White wasn't happy. I'm not sure who he was unhappy with himself or Adam Hamari. That ball had the whole plate. And I think when Mr. White sees this one again, he'll realize that it was well in the zone. Our Toyota pitch track says so. Good pitch. Now Tyler White has either convinced himself that that was a ball or just thinks Chris Sale's stuff is that good. Could possibly be, but you know it comes around when you've got 10 minutes in the major leagues and you're facing one of baseball's best. He's going to get the benefit of the call, but he didn't need it there because that entire ball had to play. Oh what in the air from Marwin Gonzalez and Chris Sale once again is in the left lane and cruising right along stretch time one nothing Sox. Turn to the Windy City to face former midfielder Alex and the Houston Dynamo. Coverage begins at 3:30 on CSN Plus. Well, it's stretch time here at U.S. Cellular Field. The perfect time to mention that today's the anniversary, 12 years ago, when the Yankees decided to go away from Cracker Jack to Crunch and Munch, to much public dismay. What a in horrible! New York. What a horrible decision. Buy me some peanuts and not Cracker Jack. No. Didn't you have a partner who had a had a deal with Cracker Jack at some point? I did many years ago. In this city? Yeah. Mr. Carey was very unhappy with a Cracker Jack promotion. 
Talked about being a young person. Paying a nickel for Cracker Jack, which he earned, or some people thought might have appropriated from someplace else, <laughs> only to find there was no prize after eating the whole box. What a horrible empty feeling for <laughs> a youngster. It was indeed. On the ground at first, Melky hit it hard. Gonzalez is there, and he wins the race. Gives you an idea of just why A.J. Hinch loves Marwin Gonzalez. He can play anywhere, play good defense, realizing that McHugh probably is not going to get there in time, takes it himself, and wins the race by a step. So wisely, and this is a good idea by Evan Gaddis, because McHugh did run to first base, he just walked out to make sure that McHugh was breathing properly. He wasn't the big bad wolf. No, he was, he, was, uh, he was feeling pretty good. One out, nobody on. McHugh to Rollins. That one flutters in for a strike. Nothing and one to Jimmy, who has seen eight pitches and struck out twice tonight. He's had a hard time staying back on that curveball. And he's so he's going to see another one. Oh, and two. Keep throwing it, right? Second inning, tough. Fifth inning, not easy. 102 on the way, and you're right. You might as well keep throwing it. High fastball out of the zone, one and two. Thirty-seven-year-old shortstop Jimmy Rollins hit it perfectly. It's a winner in bocce and in baseball. One on, one out. Finally, he's able to make some contact on a curveball and couldn't have tossed it out there any better. So squibbed off the end of the bat, you see that Valbuena is well off the line. So with no chance of that rolling foul, Jimmy Rollins has got a base hit. Then they hit the 10 pin squarely and keep them all up, but he's at first. And I would like to make an audio tweet. You would? Yes. Go for it. Ron. Wants to know why we didn't mention Lamar Hoyt's nine game streak to start the 1982 season. And the reason is he had a couple of relief appearances in there and it took him to his 12th start. So when we're talking about consecutive wins and consecutive starts to start the season, Lamar Hoyt does not qualify in 1982, but thanks for watching and inquiring as to why we haven't put him on that list. Lamar Hoyt, by the way, 83, what a year for him. Steve's audio tweets presented by the prize shelf. The prize shelf presenting Steve's audio tweets. <laughs> Tremendous underwriting. It's my it's my ability to tweet that allows me to audio tweet. Sands the only RBI tonight. And that was in between something and nothing. You can tweet at Steve Stone. And he will reply occasionally. Vocally. Well, sometimes I, I will tweet. Breaking ball in the dirt, and there goes Rollins. He was off. Well, knowing that McHugh really likes his curveball, and Evan Gaddis likes it even more than that tonight. 0-2 pitch, good pitch to run. He takes off, and he's in easily. Ball gets away from Gaddis and a much needed insurance run in scoring position. Straight fastball fouled away by Sands with a Vila, the left hander, next to the Sox. After that, Rollins stolen base, another runner in scoring position. Last inning, triple from Eaton to lead off the inning, then a flyout, strikeout, flyout, didn't get the run home. One and two is inside two balls two strikes on Jerry Sands. What a monster year 
coming up with the Dodgers in triple A where the ball tends to fly but he was one of the best sluggers in minor league baseball. Rollins has to hold for the stop sign of Joe McEwing first and third one out. Gettis wanted a slider and normally right hand pitcher right hand hitter when you want a slider you want it away. Now he cuts this ball he threw it in by design. And that's called a front door cutter and it doesn't work. Jerry Sands has had two very good at bats sandwiched around a strikeout but two for three. That ball hit so hard and Kemp got it so quickly Joe McEwing had no choice but to hold up Jimmy Rollins and so now Gannis going through his set of signs on what he's going to do if Sands does go. Don't have to worry about who's going to cover because it's going to be Correa. He is on the first base side of second in the shift. That's where Avila hit it the first time up right at Altuve in the second inning. First and third, one out. In the air left field, Kemp is back there to make the catch. Rollins tags, throw, does not come home, 2 nothing. Alex picked out a pitch that he thought he could hit in the air and took it the opposite way. We've seen Kemp with a quick release and an accurate throw but this ball was too far to even think about cutting down Jimmy Rollins. So run batted in number two and a huge insurance run for Chris Sale and the Sox. How about that at bat. I mean just go up there and hunt for something you can get the run home with. As long as you can swing at a pitch that is thigh high or above and you got a pretty good feeling you're going to be able to hit it in the air. And that's what you're looking for. Avila back to back. Played appearances that were productive. A walk and a sack fly as Jackson sends this one in the air to right field and Springer. Who 86 is the rally. Sox do get a run of a sack fly from Avila. Sale staked to a 2 0 lead. field accessible from 100 300 and 500 levels young Sox fans can learn baseball from White Sox training academy coaches don't miss the batting and pitching cages base running areas and be sure to check out the latest Xfinity technology including the X1 platform X1 by Xfinity it will change the way you experience TV boy if there's only somebody who would sponsor Chris sales oh it is it's American sale Chris sales pitching line is brought to you by American sales seven innings just two hits no walks seven strikeouts he's done it on 84 pitches and he finds himself with a two run lead. 
first he will oppose Evan Gaddis here in the eighth and Gaddis who homered two nights ago gives this one a ride Jackson is back and it's 2 1 the Astros get the run right back. Gives an idea how strong Evan Gaddis is because that's a very good pitcher's pitch that ball was low and away. Just barely having a piece of the plate and Gaddis went out and got it. A forward home run replay. Great location and seemingly takes it off the end of the bat but he's so strong he takes it out of the ballpark. Now sale to Valbuena. I mean, can you imagine double A pitchers this year? He's had a couple stints in double A this season. He's got a hit in every one of his starts in double A. You're talking about a ringer. Yeah, that's why it'd be so valuable if he can really take some of the catching load from Jason Castro because you get yet another power bat in the lineup that's not the designated hitter. 2 0 on Valbuena as Sale tries to settle in. And gets a pop up. Sanchez the call and the ball one down. What's it like? Give up a homer, next batter, throw one out of his own. How do you how do you sharpen that? No, you just you absolutely completely forget about it. That's done. There's nothing he can do. He gives up his fifth home run of the year. But that's in 67 innings, so he just knows instead of a two run lead he's got a one run lead and he still has to make his pitches. Marisnik takes low. Most of the close pitches tonight that have been low have gone to the pitchers. That one with a piece but going either way. Going a strike on Marisnik. He was in that big Mark Burley deal back in 2012, that 12 players swap. Marisnik was. Very soon after, he hit two grand slams in one game in double A. One and two from Sale. Line drive, Rollins. On the mark. Marisnik hit it hard, but fortunately, Jimmy Rollins right there. He gets a good piece of this one. But fortunately, two outs. And this is a guy that I've worried about bunting all night. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't to this point. Major League rookie Tony Kemp in his second Major League start. Hits it on the ground. Rollins has to hurry. One motion. Got him. The 37 year old legs and arms still work. Rollins gets him out of it.
I got Steve Stone in that race. No. <laughs> but good thought. And we've got a new pitcher in this one. Scott Feldman on for the 11th time. He's two and three. ERA just below four. He has given up more hits than innings pitched. He is not overpowering. He is tall. His first pitch is there for a strike to Eaton, who tripled in the sixth. For the better part of his career, he was a starting pitcher. But now working exclusively out of the pen. Eaton stayed with it, still wrapped it to second. Now Tuve, the looper, for out number one. Just like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. And one of the aspects of the Sox game this year has not been speed, but tonight, Todd Frazier steals a base. It becomes very important as Jerry Sands drives him home for the first run. Then, Jimmy Rollins steals a base. It becomes even more important as Alex Avila hits a sacrifice fly and drives him home. That is the difference in this two to one ball game, so speed enters into it as does our Miller moments. That is the margin right now the Sox a one run lead as Sanchez faces Feldman and pops it foul nothing in two if you're looking ahead to the Astros ninth which you may be Altuve Springer and Correa to face what seems like Chris Sale. Scott Feldman will ever have a place in the hearts of the Chicago Cubs. Not for what he did there, but from what he brought back. Going to Baltimore in exchange for Jake Arietta and Pedro Stroke. July 2nd of 2013. Real good trade for Baltimore. Two down. The scales of justice. <laughs> one scale on the ground there. You hope to be able in your general manager life to be able to have one of those deals and that one heavily weighted for the Cubs as Arietta has become as good as it gets in baseball. Two down for Abreu who is 0 for 3. Inside out job right field and foul. Well, Cleveland tonight is David Robertson is up and throwing, so still in question as to whether or not it's going to be sale in the ninth. Cleveland has won 7 to 2 over Cincinnati. And so with the Sox win, they will stay if they can get those three outs. They would stay two and a half up on the tribe as sale is still on the bench. What do you think Dr. Stone. I think quite obviously you give Chris Sale if he wants to go out the ability to go out also what he does give you is a good chance to retire El Tuve but if he doesn't it's a left hand pitcher negating one of the game's best base stealers so that also factors in the equation. Two and two for a break. I'm sure that conversation has already been had. So after El Tuve. You've got the right hander Springer Correa White Gonzalez Gaddis until Valbuena. But if Chris feels like he's got enough you let him run out there he's your guy. In the air right center field and Springer has out number three four guys had two complete games starting play today will Chris Sale get to three find out after this.
for a homecoming weekend with a special edition of Sports Talk Live from U.S. Cellular Field. The panel will preview an important weekend series with the Royals, so don't miss Sports Talk Live, presented by Chevy Silverado tomorrow at 5.30 on CSN Chicago. Well, the question was to pitch or not to pitch, and Sale answers with strike one here in the ninth. El Tuve showing bunt. He just wanted to make sure that Todd Frazier stays in. He was taken all the way. Fouled off 0 and 2. Sale looking for his 11th career complete game. It would be his third of the season, the most in Major League Baseball if he gets there. Now Tuve in the way on two outside. They're all big outs at this point because you're nursing a one run lead with three outs to go. But this perhaps the biggest only because of his base running prowess. Major League leader in steals on one two Altuve checks it up. Well Chris Sale has said previously the one thing he's been working on is the maturity at least mentally to stay locked in to not beat himself up after a bad pitch. Two and two. He got Altuve. There was some late life on that one. Altuve wants to know if that ball was in the strike zone. Adam Hamari says probably it wasn't, but it becomes a moot point as he throws it by him. This ball just explodes. It's upstairs. It registers 94. It looks like 98. And a tough man to strike out is down on strikes for the second time. One out, nobody on. Springer takes the ball. In the air to left, one on, one out for Correa. It was a good straight change. He broke the bat and got a base hit. It's off the corner. He has him out in front, but he keeps his hands back. The tying run at first base. Correa's 0 for 3. Fly out, ground out, strike out. If you're wondering if he's ever grounded into a double play, yes, four times this year. In the air, right side and foul. After seeing Correa in the series, where do you like to pitch him if you're sale? Well, pretty much the same way that he would attack most right handers. If you go in, go way in off the plate. I prefer to stay inside on his hands as opposed to out away. He hits that ball pretty well. He's a big man. He's got long arms and got good plate coverage. So let's see if he sails this one inside. He does. Ball and a strike. Johnny Cueto, Clayton Kershaw, Stephen Wright, and the left-hander right there are the only four Major League pitchers with two complete games this season. In the air, lazily hit. Melky the call and the catch two down. Good straight change by Chris Sale. He had a very dangerous Correa out in front. And the fans on their feet. And here comes Robin. He just wants to ask him and make sure they're on the same page and what they want to do with White. There is no way that Robin Ventura takes out Chris Sale in that situation unless Chris falls over. If he falls over, he'd still ask him if you're okay to get this last guy. That's the quickest we've ever seen booze go to cheers for the same guy. <laughs> there, 
there was no way he was taking him out. So the fans that were worried about that, not in the equation. Tyler White, perspective out number 27. He's not gotten the ball out of the infield. Oh, and one. Good straight change. He had White out in front of it. In the back of White's mind, he took a called third down in the zone last time. He's not going to leave it to Adam Hamari to end the ball game. He could be expanding that zone down. A one. Dot strike two. That was the best slider he's thrown to Hamari. He's tried to throw the backdoor slider all night long. It's the first time he hit with it. Just reinforcing the fact that Chris Sale's going to get the low pitch to White. Two strikes. Sale to White. Chris Sale's 9 0. His third complete game in the first two months. What a performance by Chris Sale. He used the backdoor breaking ball. He struck out his ninth. He didn't walk anybody. And what a job by Chris Sale. Well, that is the epitome of the stopper. You have two tough games. In the first two games of a series, you send your best to the mound, and he runs into a terrific job of pitching by Colin McHugh, but he gave up one too many runs. And Chris Sale with the home run given up to Evan Gaddis slams the door right there. The 11th career complete game for Chris Sale. The fans are serenaded by sticks and come sail away. It's never sounded so good. The Sox break the losing streak and they win two to one. Just a great job because from the beginning, Chris Sale was in control. A one, two, three first, gave up a base hit in the second, a one, two, three third, a one, two, three fourth. When you look at the way he worked over these Astro hitters, you understand why a whole lot of people believe that he is as good as anybody in the game and better than most. So it didn't matter if it was the high heater, the good position fastball. You're watching a master changing eye levels, moving the ball in out, changing speeds on everything, throwing sliders to the outside corner. And White looks at strike three to end the ball game and Chris Sale. Given a vote of confidence by his manager who said stay in the game son it's your game you complete it now nine wins nine starts only be kind Eddie Seacott and ahead of John Whitehead John Garland what a start for Chris Sale. First one's Brandon Webb at 08 to go eight and 0 and eight starts he's now nine and 0 Chris Sale once again tonight you said the word stopper. He absolutely freezes the Astros tonight. And let's go down on the field because we're going to talk to the man who caught Chris Sale tonight. Did a great job of handling a great pitcher. And anytime you get a performance like that, the catcher looms very large in calling pitches. Chris and Alex Avila were on the same wavelength. And I would assume that he has to be pretty happy about it. So, Alex, how was it tonight catching a guy who was as good as anybody in the game? Uh, yeah, I'm here with Alex Avila, and you know, Sale has just been absolutely incredible. They've been saying all game that he's the stopper. Uh, what can you say about his performance tonight? He uh, threw the ball great today. Mixes uh, mixes pitches really well, changed speeds uh, like he's been doing all year. 
located really well today. Probably had some of the best command uh, of the year so far today. And um, you know, and even the, the the ball that Gaddis hit was a really good pitch, and he's just as strong as a bear. So, but he pitched great. You know, like I said, I mean, it's he is our stopper. I mean, we've been in a little bit of a funk, and he pitched a great game. Now this is back-to-back -back complete games. Do you ever see this guy getting tired? Yeah, I mean, I see him getting tired, and we make adjustments as the game goes on. But um, you know, he's he's built himself ready uh, through, yeah, throughout the offseason, spring training for this. You know, we talked a lot about in spring training. You know. Being this type of pitcher, going deep in games for guys for for the bullpen to give them rest and um, you know to be that guy and uh, you know he's uh, he's ready for it. He wants to pitch in the postseason. We're gonna we're gonna do everything we can to get him there. We talked before about adjustments in the lineup uh, before the game and you guys ended the four game losing streak. How does this help you guys moving forward to the next series? Well, we're we're been in a funk right now offensively and just kind of as a team, we've made some uh, mental mistakes. <laughs> Uh, some physical mistakes errors on the field the past few games but that's part of it you got to continue to prepare each game um, you know and, and keep at it eventually you have some games like this and and you know try to get back on a roll like we were a little bit earlier in the year all right thank you Alex we'll send it back to you guys up in the studio thank you Sierra Sierra Santos downstairs with Alex Avila who by the way if you didn't know who he was he's got his name on his chest protector well that's how nice. he remembers if it's his chest protector or not but one of the things that he can't forget tonight his sacrifice fly a tough at bat Jimmy Rollins had stolen a base found his way to third base and two stolen bases yielded two runs tonight and that was a difference Jerry Sands drives in Frazier with the other one early in the game and Chris Sale the first major league pitcher to three complete games this year so for our director Jim Angio producer Mike Leary associate producer Dave Ross tech manager Mark Harper and the executive producer Jim Corno Jr. He is Steve Stone and I'm Jason Benetti saying so long from U.S. Cellular Field coming up next Subaru Post Game Live with Chuck and Bill lots to talk about you've been watching Chicago White Sox baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. Good night.